So what are the other ways using which we can evaluate the performance of a classification machine learning model? Something which can help us understand and draw conclusions about the robustness of a classification model. Folks, Nitin here and this is the AI University channel. In this video, I am going to explain the intuition behind cumulative accuracy profile curve and how can we evaluate a classification model by comparing it with the cap curve of a perfect model and cap curve of a random or imperfect model. And when I'm uh, uh, saying cap, that means I'm referring cumulative accuracy profile. Please don't confuse cap curve with ROC curve because these two curves are different. This is going to be another very important video from the perspective of making a firm grip on classification model evaluation techniques. So watch this video till the end. If you are new here, then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. Please don't forget to like and share as well. So let me explain the cumulative accuracy profile concept from classification model evaluation perspective using two scenarios. Let's consider uh, scenario number one where let's say you are working as a data scientist for an e-commerce company. Now let's say this company has 500,000 customers. Let's keep this number on horizontal x-axis. Now while explaining the intuition behind logistic regression model. I took an example of uh, whether a customer is going to click on email offer or not. So I'm going to take that analogy in this video as well. If in case you haven't watched that video, then click on the I button above. So based on your experience or general trend, uh, you find that whenever your company launches a new product, they send the email offers containing some discounted promotions to all of these potential customers. Let's say every time 20% uh, of them click on those email offers to either purchase a product or take a look at uh, what exactly the offer is. Hence, based on this finding, we keep uh, clicked as 100,000, which is 20% of 500,000 on y-axis. This is our binary target variable as well. Let's create a line plot here. Uh, so if so if your company is not sending any offer, then nobody is going to click on it. Hence, we have this data point here at the origin. If your company choose to send the email offer to 100,000 customers, then 20,000 of them are going to click on those offers. If your company choose to send the email offers to 200,000 customers, then 40,000 of them are going to click on those offers. And if your company choose to send the email offers to 300,000 customers, then 60,000 of them are going to click on those offers. If your company choose to send the email offer to uh, 400,000 customers, then 80,000 of them are going to click on those offers. And finally, if your company choose to send the email offers to 500,000 customers, then 100,000 of them are going to click on those offers. So this scenario is called a random scenario because company is sending offers randomly based on past experience. This line can be treated as a random model. Now let's consider a second scenario where we take more systematic approach to improve this experience so that more number of customers can click these email offers. That is doing some sort of targeted marketing where email offers can be sent to those customers who are actually interested in those offers resulting in increased response rate. So here are the steps of what we can we do. So number one, uh, take the historical data and identify customers who actually clicked on offers and extract the demographic features like salary, age, location, where they belong, browsing history and device they were operating from or other important features. Number two, build the classification model, say logistic regression model on the features identified in the step number one. Number three, predict the customers who are most likely to click on email offers using this model trained in the step number two. Number four, target or contact these subset of customers which model has predicted that they are most likely to click on the offer. So based on this new model, let's say company choose to send the email offer to 100,000 customers again. This time they got high response rate and number of customers who clicked on those offers are let's say 40,000 
and why this number is higher uh, well because our uh, more improved model has predicted the targeted customers who are going to be interested in these email offers now let's say a company sent uh, email offers to 200000 customer this time the number of customers clicked on the email offer were 70000 if the company sent an email offer to 300000 of customers this time the number of customers clicked on the email offer let's say were 90000 and if the company sent email offers to 400000 customers this time the number of customers clicked on the email offer uh, let's say were 95000 finally if the company sent email offers to 500000 customers this time the number of customers clicked on the e uh, email offer uh, were uh, 100000 now let's draw a line joining these data points this curve here is called as cumulative accuracy profile of logistic regression model so the more convex this curve uh, would be or the larger the area under this curve would be the more better your classification model would be in other words if the area between a green line which is also known as random line and orange curve is increasing then your model tends to be better if this orange curve is closer to green line then it means that the model is not performing well and is worse model so the better your model uh, the larger will be the area between its cap curve and a random scenario straight line cap curve is represented in the form of percentage values so let's convert these values shown on x-axis and y-axis into corresponding percentages that's how it looks like let's go a step further uh, let's say uh, this time we built another model uh, maybe a support vector machine in order to compare it with our current logistic regression model and this is how the cap curve uh, for support vector machine looks like the one which is highlighted in black now why are we doing that well the idea is to compare uh, different classification models to understand which model is performing better so that we can pick the better performing model for making the predictions by drawing these curves for each model uh, we can also uh, see how much additional uh, again, a particular model is scoring when switching from uh, one model to another one. That is, how much additional gain logistic regression model is scoring as compared to support vector machine. We can clearly see that logistic regression model is a better model here. So this is the way ev uh, we evaluate the models using cap curve. So we have a random uh, model cap, poor model cap and a good model cap. Now we have another curve or line which we refer as perfect model cap. This curve or line represents the model which is perfect and can represent accurately the customers who are going to click on email offer. Now if you drop a vertical line from this point where this uh, perfect uh, cap line is bending to the horizontal x-axis, you will see that it is dropping at 15% on x-axis which means that Customers till 15% may or may not click on the email offer, but customers beyond 15% mark if sent an email offer will definitely click on that offer because you see that this horizontal line of perfect cap curve is at 100% suggesting that whenever a customer is sent an offer, he will definitely click on that offer. In other words, uh, when sent the offer to 100,000 possible customers, you got a perfect positive response where all the customers uh, to which this email offer was sent uh, clicked on the email offer. Now let's draw some insights from this cap curve. We know that if our orange curve is closer to blue perfect line, then our model tends to be better. But if it is closer to green random line, then our model tends to be worse. The way we are going to analyze this graph is by taking two approaches. Number one, we first calculate the area under curve for perfect model. We refer it as uh, area subscript perfect. Then we calculate the area under curve for our model that is that in our case was logistic regression model which is represented by orange line. We refer it as area subscript log reg. Then we calculate the accuracy rate by dividing area of log reg by area of perfect. If this ratio is uh, closer to 1 then it means that your model is really good. If the accuracy rate is closer to 0 then it means that your model is worse. Now let's see the next approach. Here we will draw a line from the 50% point 
in the customer's sent offers axis up to the logistic regression model cap curve now from the intersection point on the curve project it to the email clicked axis which is y axis and we can refer it as clicked percent this right here now what does this clicked percent depicts well it depicts how good your model is if the clicked percent is less than 60 percent then uh, you have a worst model if clicked percent is greater than 60 percent but less than 70 percent then you have a model which is a worse model if you have a click percent which is greater than 70 percent uh, and less than 80 percent then you have a good model if in case the clicked percent is greater than 80 percent but less than 90 percent then what you see is a better model and finally if the clicked percent is greater than 90 percent and less than 100 percent then your model is termed as a best model and here it might be the case that this model um, is a result of a overfitting scenario so you should uh, also look out for that so folks i will take a pause here uh, and here is today's question if the cap curve for uh, for the classification model is increasing towards perfect cap curve then is it going to be a good model or bad model please post your answers comments in the comment section given below so that i can get a chance to incorporate your feedback you can also post your technical questions in the comment section and i will try to answer the same if you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel consider clicking that little subscribe button in case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever i will release a new video so thanks for hanging out with me guys i will be covering next topic in the upcoming video so keep on watching thank you